Hello everyone and welcome to a very special day because today is the first ever episode of Disc Review. This is a new series that we're going to have on the channel where I simply review disc golf discs. And the whole point of this is to hopefully uh, give you some recommendations if you're looking for new discs or if you're thinking about getting a certain disc, maybe I can start to develop a catalog that you can come back to and see what I thought of these discs and kind of get an idea of what they might be like. So today we are reviewing three of my own discs. So we have the Soft APX from Discraft, the Innova Wolf, and the Innova Leopard 3. So we'll just get straight into it. So first up is this Soft APX from Discraft. This is a stable putter. However, with the flight numbers, you could argue that it's understable. In my own experience, it's pretty stable, stays pretty straight, and it has a zero on the uh, disc itself. So I don't think it's crazy to say that this is a, a stable disc, actually. So a little bit of background. I found this disc at my local course, and there was no name on it or anything like that. And at the time, I was just beginning, so this was replacing my DX AVR as my main putter. That also does mean that I don't know the weight because it's been long since faded and I don't really know much else about this disc other than uh, that's actually quite old. I did a little bit of research for this video and found some resources talking about how this run came from like 2005 or something like that. Anyway, this is made with elite pr plastic, is uh, very soft and squishy which is great for grabbing at baskets. And in my experience, it does help a little bit with uh, putting on hills. That's what I mainly use this for, kind of absorbs some of that power before it starts rolling down. Otherwise, it's got really good grip. That plastic uh, makes it kind of more of a soft, rubbery sort of texture, which uh, makes for a great, really consistent release, making it very reliable as well. Uh, one thing to note is it does have considerable fade. Uh, the flight numbers don't really reflect that, but really if you throw from any sort of distance, then it is going to come to the left by quite a bit. It does feel very thin just because it's light as part of it, but otherwise it might just kind of be a thinner disc in general. So if you're looking for something that's heftier and has some weight to it, this is not it. At least not at this weight. Maybe if it was a heavier weight, it could work out better but for me this feels like I'm throwing a paper plate. I actually really like the colors on this disc, the one that I have specifically, kind of a baby blue and a uh, nice purple there. It just gives it a really playful feel which I feel like kind of describes the disc pretty well of just being kind of light and floaty. The design itself is not too bad, it's uh, kind of boring but there's definitely more boring designs out there for sure. If you're going for something because of the style, I don't think that you would get this. So to wrap up my thoughts on this disc in particular, it's reliable, it gets the job done. If you're looking for a soft putter, it's not a bad option, but I definitely think there's better options out there. Next is the Wolf. This is a very understable mid-range. I wish I knew that when I first got this disc, I did not understand flight numbers at the time and I was getting it actually to be used as a hyzer bomb disc, which it actually does basically the opposite of helping you hyzer bomb. Learning the flight numbers was more of the problem in that case though. Back then I just really didn't know how to use it correctly and so I ended up not using it too much anyway. So I have my Wolf in DX plastic, which as many of you know is very cheap and usually not very durable. Uh, however, my disc has actually held up pretty well. There's some uh, scratches and little places where the plastic is starting to peel off but otherwise it's not as bad as some of my other dx discs or dx discs that i've seen that are ripped to shreds i actually kind of like the idea of dx plastic because you can end up almost making your own disc in a way when you beat it in and because you're going to beat it in differently every time it kind of becomes a very unique sort of disc and no other disc is going to fly like that so something to keep in mind it is also nice how inexpensive the DX plastic is. However, I will mention uh, in the future how many other disc companies other than Innova have much better quality plastics at the same price. Anyway, this disc has a very unique feel. The rim is actually raised a little bit, so it creates a sort of bump in between 
uh, the inner part of the disc and the outside rim. That and also probably just the mold itself feels very large, uh, something to keep in mind. And it also does have a pretty pronounced bead if that is something that bothers you. If you actually know how to throw this disc, it actually is very reliable, it is understable, and it acts very glidy in that sort of way. It goes to the right, obviously, at first, uh, and comes back, but in a way it feels just very smooth and glidy is really the best way to describe it. In my experience, it also is not quite as understable as uh, the flight numbers suggest. I would say maybe like a minus three. Uh, it's a small difference, but but I don't think it's something that is going to consistently be a good roller disc or anything like that. Another thing to note is I also think that it fades quite a bit more than, than it says. As this series progresses, you'll find that I'm usually uh, very underwhelmed by the design of DX discs. They're usually just kind of too small and they always are wrapped in uh, the Innova logo and everything like that. But anyway, with the Wolf, there is some nice typography going on and the Wolf itself is pretty badass. So I just think it would be really cool to have that sick Wolf head design kind of fill up the whole disc instead of just being in a small kind of corner of the disc, you know? In conclusion, this can be a great disc for uh, some good shot shaping, or possibly if you have trouble flipping up your disc, it flips up fairly easily if you keep it straight or even put a little bit of hyzer on there. That being said, there's definitely better understable mid-ranges out there. However, I still think that this disc is very underrated and very overlooked. For me personally, I kind of use it as a glidy mid-range, something in between a mid-range and a fairway. But in reality, you should probably just get yourself a glidy mid-range. Lastly, the Leopard 3. The Leopard 3 is a slightly understable fairway driver. It is slightly faster than the regular Leopard, and in my experience, it is also a little bit less understable than the regular Leopard. However, that could also just be because the Champion Plastic is very rigid. Which, by the way, this Champion Plastic has held up incredibly well. I've had this disc for a long time and use it a lot and I don't really have more damage than just some scuffs around the rim. As for the grip, it does feel very thin, it is very low profile, and the Champion Plastic also can be a little bit slippery, however that's never been a problem for me. Now, I'm going to give this a lot of high praise actually. This I believe is the most reliable disc in my bag, and it's probably because it's the most controllable. It's the most predictable, I can release it at pretty much any angle and know exactly what, what it will do and anytime that I mess up with it, I know that's completely on me and I know exactly what I did wrong. The disc has a very slight fade to the right and comes back left a little bit that ends up making the disc fly pretty straight. It's also worthy to note that this fades a little bit more than I would say that the flight numbers represent. In my opinion, champion designs are usually kind of boring, it's usually just text. However, this one has a really cool die on it and really elevates the design and I think makes it a very cool disc. However, something to keep in mind with any sort of clear or translucent disc is that it can sometimes be tough to find. In conclusion, I'm going to give this disc glowing praise. I think everyone should get a Leopard 3, genuinely. It is just so controllable and so predictable. At any skill level, I think you can really get some good distance out of it and really either learn your game or be able to control some of your best parts of your game. I just genuinely think that it's just one of Innova's best discs, as far as I know. Anyway, that's the first episode of Disc Review. I know, it's so sad. First episode is done. If you enjoyed the video, obviously leave a like, and if you like my content, go ahead and subscribe. This is a new series, so let me know what you think, and if you want to see more, what discs should I review next? Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye Ha <laughs> ha